and the Buhari reaffirms commitment to end insurgency. Movement of military command, advanced team arrives Meduguri, northeast Nigeria. All set for inauguration of 8th National Assembly on Tuesday. And G7 leaders agree to win their economies off carbon fuels. Hello, welcome to NTA International News. I'm Nancy Godi Angunihu. President Muhammad Buhari has presented a wish list of Nigeria in the presence of world leaders attending the G7 summit in Munich, Germany. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday, who has been monitoring the proceedings, reports on the wish list of the president at the summit. President Muhammadu Buhari is attending the summits based on the invitation extended to him by the German Chancellor Angela Merkel as he holds a key side meeting with some of the G7 heads of states at the summits. President Buhari and Barack Obama of the United States were among the early leaders at the venue. The participation of Nigeria, many say, is a clear indication of the acknowledgement of the international community of the significant role of Nigeria in global affairs, especially the recent change in government. And this certainly is an opportunity for us to take our rightful place in the committee uh, of nations but at the same time it also gives us the opportunity to get the g7 to collaborate and cooperate with nigeria either as a group or bilaterally in issues uh, pertaining to security um, the insurgency in the north is uh, boko haram and the um, menace it uh, has created so what are the significance of uh, the readiness of these countries to work with the present administration? It symbolizes the highest level of acceptance any country can get and enormous goodwill at that. It's an opportunity for us to really key into that because these are some of the most powerful countries uh, on earth. There must be full of action by the G7 leaders to help us because we need the help now. But we have a tremendous potential and ability and there are very brilliant Nigerians who are ready to work. But your selection process must be done in such a way that you bring on board these people who are ready to work and knowledgeable in the areas of uh, international relations and the national development. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari has reaffirmed his administration's total commitment to an end insurgency in the shortest possible time. Speaking at a meeting with President Francois Hollande of France after his participation in Monday's G7 outreach program, President Buhari said that Nigeria will overcome and welcome greater support and cooperation from France and other friendly nations for its ongoing efforts to overcome Boko Haram and restore full security and normalcy to areas affected by the group's atrocities. The president noted that his administration will always and was ready taking concrete action to build a more efficient and effective coalition of Nigeria and neighboring countries against Boko Haram. Nigeria, he said, will appreciate more intelligence on the terrorist group's links with ISIS, movements, trainings, and sources of its arms and ammunition to overcome terrorism and insurgency in the country and its sub-region. President Buhari reiterated that there was absolutely no link between religion and the atrocities of Boko Haram. He quotes, there is clearly no religious basis for the actions of the group, adding that their atrocities show that members of the group either do not know God at all or they don't believe in him. French President Francois Hollande commended President Buhari's concerted efforts to galvanize Nigeria's armed forces, security agencies, and neighboring countries for more decisive action to eradicate Boko Haram. The French leader assured President Buhari that France will give Nigeria and its coalition partners greater support against terrorism and insecurity, including military and intelligence cooperation to help them to overcome 
the security challenge posed by Boko Haram and its global terrorist allies as quickly as possible. He also appealed for greater bilateral cooperation between Nigeria and France in other areas, including trade, economic, and cultural relations. President Buhari also received similar pledges of enhanced support from Prime Minister Stephen Harper of Canada and Chancellor Angela Merkel, who he also conferred with before departing from the venue of the G7 2015 summit. The president is due back in Abuja early Tuesday. And in compliance with President Muhammad Buhari's pronouncement and the Chief of Army Staff's directive, a reconnaissance and advance team for the establishment of military command and central center for the fight against insurgency and terrorism has moved to Meiduguri, Bruno State. The team, which is led by a two-star general, has already commenced work and comprises elements of the office of the Chief of Army Staff, all the relevant army headquarters, departments, and other combat support components. A statement by the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sani Usman, says the center will serve as a forward command base for the chief of army staff and other service chiefs. It says the center is an elaboration of an existing army headquarters command and control arrangement. From now on, the fight against terrorism and insurgency will be monitored, coordinated, and controlled from the center. In the meantime, an advanced team has arrived at the Borno State Capitol to ensure the takeoff of the center for a successful counterterrorism operations in the Northeast. Correspondent Haman Jabani reports. Acting Director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sani Kukashika Usuman said the team, which is led by a two-star general, has already commenced work in NS for the takeoff of the command and central center. The work comprises elements of the Chief of Army Staff, all relevant departments, and other combat support components. The center will serve as a forward command base for the Chief of Army Staff and other service chiefs. The military command and control center has been established here in Maiduguri. And uh, the team has commenced work in earnest. And any moment from now, the Chief of Army Staff and other service chiefs will be operating from the center. And I wish to inform you that we have an alternative center in Yola. He said the fight against terrorism and insurgents will be monitored, coordinated, and controlled from the center. To also add impetus and renew vigor to Operation Zaman Lafia, aimed at bringing terrorism and insurgents to an end. In Medjugorje, Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Away from terrorism. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo says for functional national framework for transparent and efficient markets is central to injecting confidence in Nigerians. The Vice President stated this at a forum in Lagos. Vice President Oshibajo speaking on the theme regulations as catalysts for economic growth noted that despite divergent interests in business on one hand and the consumers on the other, regulators should make it possible for consumers to have trust in business they transact. This trust, he says, boosts high-level confidence, which in turn encourages experimentation, competition, and drive innovation. He solicited more support for Nigerians, irrespective of ethnic or political affiliations, to work closely with the present administration to ensure Nigeria achieves her dream of being among Committee of Nations. Moving on to Nigeria's legislature, all is now set for the inauguration of the 8th Senate of Tuesday, on Tuesday, during which new presiding and other principal officers are to be elected for another term of four years. National Assembly correspondent Adamu Sambo reports some preparations for the unfolding political scenario. This is the most coveted seat in the Senate chamber, which has been vacant since the life of the 7th Senate ended on the 4th of June. By Tuesday the 9th, a new occupant will emerge not only to preside over the 8th Senate as president, but also as chairman of Nigeria's National Assembly. As at the time of filing this report, two candidates, Ahmed Lawan from Yobe State and Bukola Saraki from Kwara State, have indicated their willingness to contest for the Senate presidency. Although their party, the governing APC, held a non-binding primaries over the weekend where Senators Ahmed Lawan and George Akume emerged 
as sole candidates for the Senate President and Deputy Senate President, respectively, supporters of Senator Bukola Saraki, who boycotted the election, insist on slogging it out on the floor. The governing All Progressives Congress has the majority 59 senators elect. 40 of them are first timers, while the People's Democratic Party PDP has 49 members. 35 of them are also coming for the first time. If the election is conducted on the floor, only simple majority is required for the winner to emerge. I think for us to maintain peace and unity and stability of the Senate, I'm appealing to them. They are responsible people, they are people of high integrity. You know, you don't have to say you want to stop somebody from being there because you wanted to be there. No sacrifice is ever too much. If it doesn't happen to you today for you, God has other plans for you. But what you do now will determine how people can trust you in the future. So they shouldn't beat this drum too hard. I pray to God that we will do it in an atmosphere that will not be rancorous, in an atmosphere that will show that we are mature men and women who put the affairs of our republic ahead of our own personal fortunes. We are going to be in the opposition as PDP, but we are going to also provide responsible opposition. Whatever we say will be backed by facts, we will provide alternatives, and we are going to make sure that the interest of the people of Nigeria is protected, first and foremost. This is the first time in the history of the Senate that the contest for the Senate presidency, observers point out, will be too close to call. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Members elect of the 8th Assembly of the House of Representatives are perched on the verse of history as the new assembly opens Tuesday. National Assembly correspondent Ifanyo Kafo in a preview raises some critical questions which are likely to resound in the 8th Assembly. As the clock ticks, it is less than 24 hours for these hollow chambers to come alive again. 360 lawmakers will be allocated their seats to carry out their legislative functions. But who occupies the seat of the Speaker? Four years ago, the 7th Assembly was inaugurated in circumstances described as a total display of the independence of the legislature when former Speaker Aminu was irritated ruling party's choice. President Muhammadu Buhari, in his inaugural speech, stated that executive under his watch will not seek to encroach on the duties and functions of the legislature. But the question said by the AP Well the choice Perhaps will eventually come on the Hall Assembly. If I occur for NTA News. This is news on NTA International, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. We earlier informed you that President Muhammadu Buhari has reaffirmed his administration's commitment to end insurgency. We also heard that an advanced team of Nigerian army has arrived Maiduguri, Bruno State capital, in compliance with President Buhari's pronouncement. In still to come, G7 leaders agree to win their economies of carbon fuels. Details in a moment. I'm 
a message of hope across the land. Stay together as one. All the obstacles will disappear. Let's open up our hearts. Let's open up our hearts. And cherish this piece of the earth that God has given us. Thank you for being there. The Chairman Police Service Commission, Mike Okiro, has raised fears that a staff of the commission, in connivance with some journalists, are out to blackmail and extort the sum of 10 million naira from him. Mike Okiro stated this while clearing the air on an alleged misappropriation of funds meant for the commission. Correspondent Anthony Forson reports. Mike Okiro, who said he was taken aback when some unknown journalists began to place calls through to his phone, demanding that he pays them the sum of 10 million naira or risk his secret being published. But little did he know that the main suspect was within his fold. I received a text on my phone. Which read, it's here. After you, sir, can you kindly call me? I'm working on a short on a story over a late 250 million loot in your commission. Unquote. Then he said, it is better you pay the 10 million now. Because if you don't, if you don't, the story is published and people will not believe your subsequent explanations. Moreover, the detailed deposition came from a worker in the police commission. Mike Ogino said he has formally invited ICPC to conduct a full investigation into the matter as the commission's financial details are intact with no funds missing or unaccounted for. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. In talking business now, OPEC considers $80 as new oil price and National Bureau of Statistics puts Naira's first quarter, Nigeria's first quarter in unemployment rate at 7.5%. These are more with Chiazala Mekie. It's been nearly a year since all market witnessed a drop in oil prices. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries are for the first time talking publicly about a new price for crude. All ministers from Iraq, Venezuela, Angola, and Vienna are suggesting $80 a barrel instead of the $100 a barrel mark. Market watchers are, however, watching to see the outcome in the days ahead. Meanwhile, the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, says the country's unemployment rate moved up to 7.5% in the first quarter of 2015, compared to 6.4% in the fourth quarter of 2014. The NBS observed that this means that about 504,000 economically active persons were looking for job within January 1 and March 31st. And to the money markets, the Naira exchanged at 196 Naira to the dollar, while at the parallel markets, it's exchanged at 216 Naira, while Brent crude has remained at $63 per barrel. Chiazalam Ekiye, NTA News. 
G7 leaders agree to wean their economies off carbon fuels. Trainee pilot dies in plane crash in Pretoria, South Africa, as Oscar Pistorius is likely to be out in August. These are more stories from around the world with Smoopland.com. President Obama at the Group of Seven Leaders Summit in Germany reiterated that ISIS will be defeated, although there will be setbacks and lessons along the way. The leaders at the summit agreed to win their economies of carbon fields and supported a global goal for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. There was discussion about additional steps that we might need to take if Russia, working through separatists, uh, doubled down on aggression. The leaders also want Russia and Ukraine to comply with the February 12 ceasefire earlier agreed on. In Pretoria, South Africa, a 27-year-old trainee pilot has died in a plane crash after losing control of his micro-light aircraft. The trainee pilot was a Tanzanian student who was earning his flying hours at the flight school and joined the flight school in February. Oscar Pistorius, who was jailed for five years in 2014 for the culpable homicide of his girlfriend, River Stinkamp, is likely to be released on probation by August 21st after a recommendation from South Africa's Correctional Services Department. Meanwhile, the state's appeal against Oscar's culpable homicide conviction will be held by the Supreme Court in November. Singapore and Malaysia Sabah State held a day of mourning on Monday for those killed in the Mount Kinabalu quake. 16 people were confirmed dead after the magnitude 6.0 quake, which hit the mountain in Sabah on Friday. Muplang Dakok, NTA News. We take a look at sports. Sports administrators end inspection of facilities ahead of all Africa games as Nigeria gets wild card to compete in basketball competition. Amanzi Marcus reports. The technical meeting of Chiefs of Missions to the forthcoming All-Africa Games in Congo ended on Saturday in Brazzaville, the country's capital. Director General of the National Sports Commission, al Hassan Yakmut, who led Nigeria's delegation, said the country will compete in 21 of the 23 games on offer during the games, holding from September 4 to 19. We were able to tour the whole facilities. We saw the games village. We inspected also the facilities for competitions and conferences. Uh, including international uh, a broadcasting center for the media that will be coming and we discuss issues of anti-doping in the meeting. The FIFA Women's World Cup entered day two on Sunday with 14 goals in two matches. Germany trashed one of Africa's representatives Cote d'Ivoire 10-0 in the first Group B match in Ottawa. As the Germans celebrate, the Ivorians debutants in the competition have an uphill task to qualify to the next stage. In the second Group B match, Norway beat Thailand by four unreplied goals. Meanwhile, the governing body of basketball in Africa, FIBA Africa, has awarded Nigeria a slot in the fourth edition of the FIBA Africa Under-16 Women Championship. The competition holds from 10 to 19 July in Antananarivo, Madagascar, and is meant to support the relaunch of FIBA's youth development program. President of the Nigeria Basketball Federation, Tijan Umar, said they will open camp in Abuja soon to prepare for the competition, where qualifiers for the 2016 FIBA Under-17 World Championship for Women will emerge. With Sports News Update, Amanzi Marcus, NTA News. It has been a wet Monday in Abuja and its environs. Let's now check on the weather prospect in Nigeria and other world cities.
where the report concludes the news. Thank you for watching.